Welcome back to Bray Birch DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Yes, last night, I was like all of you all, when I saw Nakua get injured, it was a sickening feeling. And then he came back on the field and I felt better. And then the third quarter came and they said he was out for the rest of the game. And like you all, I broke my laptop, I threw my smartphone, and I broke my TV because the worst thing in the world when it comes to DFS outside of a late scratch is an in-game injury. So because of that injury, it kind of makes it hard to do some of the comparison things, but I will have a specialty slide just for this week. And we can pull it up and it says, anyone can be faded. We can look at this winning lineup. It was a 3-3 roster construction, three from Detroit, three from LA, and the winning GPP in the main contest was insane. Now, part of that was because Nakua, but even with that, it took some stones for the people that submitted this lineup because they faded Amaral St. Brown and they faded Laporta and they faded golf. So they they faded uh, three out of the top five players, definitely the number one player uh, from uh, the Lions. And then I mentioned yesterday that you can have a lineup. I said probably it doesn't happen as often. And actually, they didn't have a go-off game. But I mentioned you can have a lineup with Gibbs and Montgomery. We talked about all of the two-headed monsters. We talked about Cup, and we talked about Nakua. We talked about St. Brown. We talked about Laporta, and we talked about Gibbs and Montgomery. So I said this was a doable lineup, and somebody did it, and they faded uh, Laporta. They faded golf. They faded uh, St. Brown. And then on the Rams side, they faded uh, Nakua, which is obviously if you were going to get the big money, you would have had to be one of the, the 40 to 45% of people, depending on your contest, that faded uh, Nakua. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, they faded, you know, Williams as well. So, I mean, very, very interesting. I mean, Kyron Williams on the Rams side. And then obviously uh, they put – you know, Williams from the Lions. And I mentioned him. I said, man, this guy is fast. He's sneaky. I said, the problem that he has is kind of problem we have with a lot of these talented teams is there's only one ball and so many playmakers. But um, very, very interesting winning lineup. I said, I mean, I just think the big thing to get from this is anyone can be faded. It makes you feel kind of weird, kind of icky, kind of terrible when you, when you fade too many great players. Uh, but and I mean, then you can say, well, Walter, that is I, that is a, uh, a vote for a lot of times having, you know, lineup makers. And yes, I mean, you can, you know, pay services. Uh, there's a lot of technology out there. So, yeah, because when you take the human element out of it, you know, a uh, lineup generator, boom, creates this lineup. You don't even think about it. But I still think, you know, you know, spending your hard-earned money you know i still think you should review a lineup before you just you know hit you know just accept it um but this kind of gets into you know um contests you're playing in obviously uh the fewer lineups that you're going to submit the more conservative you're probably going to be so maybe you should play in contests where you can submit more lineups so maybe especially early in the season where you're you're still trying to learn your process you're just still trying to you know depending on how new you are the dfs um uh the things that you need to know and not to know about dfs maybe you know you you know mass multi-enter into a 50 cent contest that costs you you know maybe uh 15 instead of one a $15 contest. So those are kind of the things you can consider, especially early in the year, because you don't want to flame out early. I mean, we still have 20 plus weeks of DFS. All right. So let's get into this contest. So Monday Night Football, our first version of it, we have Aaron Rodgers. I guess it's part three because part one would be with Green Bay. Part two would be the sad first game last year. So this is Aaron Rodgers part three. We are all hoping that it doesn't end like part two uh, ended, um, especially from a DFS perspective, because I'm assuming 
Uh, if you watch this video, there's a pretty good chance that at least one of your lineups, you're going to have Aaron Rodgers. So they're going to be out in uh, Santa Clara, suburb of, I guess it's a suburb, exurb of uh, San Francisco. Uh, the over-under is 43 and a half. So basically that rounds out to um, the Giants being favored to win roughly 23 to 20. So a little lower scoring than our Sunday night uh, football game. So, I mean, these two teams... We can start with the uh, with the 49ers. They they're in if it don't if it ain't broke don't fix it mode. Uh, there are not a lot of changes uh, for really the past two or three years, minus Purdy, um, and that was two three years ago. So I mean, I guess we replaced Garoppolo with Purdy. So not a lot of changes. So a lot of your thought process from previous years still applies. I know. It says McCaffrey questionable, but you've seen this guy. You got to pull him off the field. So, I mean, I'm not concerned about that questionable tag. Uh, Samuel, we know Debo. I mean, he. we saw what, you know, Jalen Reed did uh, for the Packers. Samuel's been doing that for years. So he's that hybrid, you know, wide receiver running back. Um, IU, we know he's their most traditional you know, wide receiver that we have. Then you have Kittle, who at times over the past five plus years has been one of the best tight ends uh, in football. And then you have you have Mr. Third Down wide receiver Jennings. Anytime there's a third down and they actually need, you know, a play, they are going to go to Jennings. And then you have Mr. Trick Play, use check. Uh, and then we'll see if Mason gets on the field more because of them trying to preserve McCaffrey. And those are the main players. I mean, you have Moody, good kicker, and then obviously the 49ers defense is always in play. Uh, for the Jets, you have Brees Hall. We know, I mean, this guy, when he's not injured and gets the opportunity, he's been amazing. We've obviously never, I mean, look at these last four out of the last five games. They were just ridiculous. Uh, it's We're going to find out how he gels and how things change with Rodgers. Uh, we have the stud who's been stuck with the worst quarterbacks possible the past few years. And uh, Garrett Wilson, once again, we'll see how that relationship goes. Uh, with um, Aaron Rodgers and then we can go below that and we can see that we have Williams so formerly of the Chargers so he's always had a good quarterback we'll see you know he's coming back from injury so we'll see what role that he is going to play with the team you have Zerline you know very good kicker with the Rams still a good kicker uh, with the Jets you have Conklin, who is probably very happy to have Rodgers. A lot of people are high on Conklin uh, this year. Jets defense, never a bad defense to play. Um, who else? You have Gibson, super talented, but I mean, just a really deep wide receiver core. Everybody's, you know, going to, I think Lazard, understandably, is going to be uh, over owned because of his connection, you know, his connection uh, with. Um, with Rodgers. You have Allen. Once again, I, I'm a little nervous about starting him with, you know, depending on how Brees Hall's role is. Um, who else do we have here? I mean, every once you get kind of below here, you're getting into some dangerous territory. So let's look at my two lineups. So my first lineup is a 3-3 construction. This is my, I think, just things are going to go how they go in the past few years. I mean, it's usually not a bad idea to put McCaffrey uh, <laughs> in the captain spot. And then I'm actually uh, putting him with Kittle and then use check. So obviously in this construction, I'm assuming that there's going to be some kind of trick play to use check, which happens. How much did it happen last year? Happened twice last year. So I'm saying this is going to be one of those games where you have a use check uh, trick play. I'm saying McCaffrey is going to be a beast. And I'm actually in this construction saying McCaffrey gets rushing touchdowns. And then I'm going to be able to fade Purdy by having Kittle maybe get one touchdown. So this is kind of a, this construction is kind of like a 28 to 21 or I guess maybe 28 to 17 or 28 to 20 kind of line of construction because I have Zerline, have him getting a couple of those 50 yard kicks. I mean, did you see what Boswell did for the Steelers? If that were Sunday or Monday night football, that would have been a difference maker. And then I have the two studs, Hall and Wilson. So yeah, in this lineup kind of sticking with what I had earlier today, you can fade anybody. I'm fading both of the quarterbacks and going with the playmakers. And then in my second lineup, it's a more traditional lineup. It is a game. Garrett Wilson game, a couple of touchdowns, great connection with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Purdy does his thing. Aaron Rodgers also gets a touchdown to Conklin. Uh, Moody gets one of those three or four uh, field goal games. And then Ayuk has a touchdown or two. So 
Let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.